this is a disclaimer as to why the thumbnail says winter lake air not because of the magnitude or the temperatures but because of the low humidity levels of the air thank you and enjoy the video hello everybody welcome back to another video i'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day so today's upload is going to be an episode on the long range outlook or you know the pattern change that's coming you already know what's uh, uh going on basically very chilly conditions uh, very i mean very chilly conditions for a reference or to give you a perspective there was actually an area in the up of michigan today that recorded 32 degrees fahrenheit so yep that's a surprise um but you know that's what happens with these blasts especially when it's 20 to 30 degrees below average some people are saying there's oppressive heat no at this point there um or maybe across the west but any Anywhere across the east, northeast, there is real no oppressive heat occurring at this point. Um, it's close to average, but most, you know, in those areas that are people claim to be oppressive heat, there's no severe weather. Um, so this is the best thing to focus on. And I'll show you some of these temperature anomalies. <laughs> They're going to be ridiculously low. So, uh, yeah, again, uh, consider subscribing to this channel. Consider liking this video if you like these type of videos about this weather. About I'll be answering many questions like when to see your first frost, all those questions. You know, uh, what to expect this winter, I will be making <clears throat> those videos, so, uh, you know, stay tuned for that. Uh, so right now we're looking at uh, the temperature anomalies of the past. You can see this was Thursday yesterday, <clears throat> and this was during the night. You can see that it was very below average, and uh, there was actually 32 degrees somewhere located across the UP of Michigan, which, <clears throat> which is not unheard of. So just to give you a reference, the growing season is just about coming to an end in about a month and a half. Um, for many, uh, at least here in central, uh, in central Midwest, or a month and a half. The further up north, northern Minnesota, you have maybe tops half a month. So, if we were to look at this, you could see that uh, this, these cold, below average temperatures will continue for quite a while, and it will kind of, you know, windle down. Uh, they won't be as powerful. You could see there's a little bit less. There's some uh, warm air is coming in, but still fairly impressive. But then soon, we get a reinforcing shot. Of cool air you can see this one here <clears throat> we get a little bit of warm air in here uh, this is for <clears throat> Tuesday of next week and remember I was saying that Tuesday Monday possibly a little bit warmer <clears throat> of next week but then um, really I mean this blast, second blast is gonna be really impressive even cooler you can see 20 degrees below average possibly across northern Minnesota <clears throat> and this will definitely bring frosts to some area <clears throat> And so, you know, that's definitely uh, a sign of fall. And you can see this one reaches all the way down to the south, Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana, Arkansas, maybe not Florida or the you know, extreme parts of the southeast, like south, eastern <clears throat> Georgia or Carolina, but much of the country is in the cool notice how it's a little bit warmer across i mean quite a bit actually warmer across the west that's the only area that i'll uh, take you know oppressive heat from or very warm because it is pretty warm and humid over there in the west but even that in northeast uh, you can see it's going to be a little bit um uh cooler on a uh, little bit cooler still despite um the cooler air having a hard time to reach it and earlier forecasted not to reach it you can see now it's forecasted to bring in some cooler temperatures especially towards the end you can see right there fairly chilly and then obviously we get a little bit of a warm-up there's just you know this is a cycle <clears throat> and you can see we get a little bit of warm temperatures not many cold but then uh, this one actually i don't know if it will show that third blast but some of the models okay yeah it does show you can see the third blast of air gets a little bit warmer around that september you know that first week of september you know a couple of days of, of throughout the first week of september but then we see another fall blast so and this is you can see a fourth one getting ready up there so this is an ongoing thing if we were to look at the two meter temperature shaded at this point <clears throat> you can see these are the daytime highs right here um so yeah there's some 50s 60s and then during the evenings and uh nights you could see <clears throat> we get 40s and 50s across a good portion of the country and notice also how there's frost up here by nova scotia <clears throat> and newfoundland uh more towards newfoundland <clears throat> and if we were to go back i wanted to show you with that second air mass uh, you could see that during the nights let's see okay you can see during the nights um widespread 40s across much of <laughs> across much of um, the northern U.S., you can see 40, 47, 46, 46, 49. This is the GFS, here, so maybe exaggerating it just a bit, but um, uh, the other models are showing very similar things. 
<clears throat> and uh, <laughs> sorry about that. And other models are showing very similar things as well. So it's not just, and you can see, it's not just one model. But in this particular zone right here, we could be getting a little bit of a warm up around that third through sixth of September. Right? We could get a little bit of a warm up. But then you can see right here. Uh, I mean, look, 30s up there throughout the, the after right after that with that fourth cool down. If we go to the ensemble members. Here, which is a uh, several GFS's you know, type of models. I think it's 24 models that are combined And if we were to wait for this to load it would show very similar things actually a little bit more drastic and it would probably pop possibly convince more people as to You know why this actually will occur. I mean look at this some of these temperatures are showing the exact same things widespread 50s 40s lower 60s down <clears throat> This is during the night, but you can see lower 60s down all the way into uh, into almost the Gulf Coast states, into uh, Arkansas and Mississippi and Louisiana. But uh, you can still see the 40s up to the north. And uh, if we were to go through this, you could see there's, again, that little warm-up that occurs right here. We get some 70s, 60s, way up further up during the day. But then uh, you can see we get that cool down yet again. And if we were to go to show you this a better picture of this, let's go to the five-day uh, temperature anomalies. <laughs> and this basically shows us um, what the what the 24 models think so if you think that i'm just showing you the gfs well maybe you should watch the video and you could see that uh cooler 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 across much of the country excluding the west um the northeast parts of it may be a little bit warmer and extreme parts of the southeast like florida but a good chunk of the country will be in that cooler uh, phase and this is exactly what i predicted uh for the fall you know i predicted this way back in june and it's coming together right now in in a very big fashion and uh, I think this will be a recurring pattern throughout the winter blast like this That's why I think the West will <clears throat> be warmer because that's what it is right now And we see definite similarities between summer and winter and then I think <clears throat> We will see uh, you know a cooler pattern across the yes, Midwest and uh, south and north and northeast throughout the winter uh, Because that's what's happening right now and if you don't believe me, you could watch some of my other videos and I explain the science behind why those two things are very, very, very correlated together. So, uh, <clears throat> let's go to the European model now, just to satisfy those that are still not satisfied. And uh, this is actually the newest model run. <clears throat> and uh, you can see that uh, they're also showing those cool blasts of air anywhere you see that that is a troughing in the pattern And if we were to show you the 2 meter temperature anomalies on a different website, which I don't have right now, but if I did, <clears throat> then... You could see that. I mean, it would be very, very, uh, it would be very chilly, just like the GFS. Let's go to an old model run so it goes through the whole time period. And you can see that European may be showing a little bit of a warm up, but then um, if you were to go to the northern hemisphere, we would see another cool down occurring. So let's go to a different region like the northern, uh, let's just go to North America. Never mind, not the northern hemisphere. Uh, where is that? North America. <laughs> and you can see there's another cool down occurring right there, possibly starting to form. Um, which would come down in the next couple of days and you can see that G European is showing the warm-up right now That's third fourth fifth time frame just like the GFS so all the models are in very good agreement the Climate prediction center is in very good good agreement with me and itself and you can see August 28th through the September 1st <clears throat> 6 to 10 outlook look at that below average uh, temperatures right there very below average Northeast I wouldn't say it would be <clears throat> So above uh, of average as they're showing right here. Uh, I would you know, maybe include these parts of the northeast as being above average the coastal areas here i'd still say uh, at least neutral you know at least give it a 50 50 the west though yeah i think that will be fairly warm especially uh the further you know northwest you will go <clears throat> and uh you can see that the 8 to 14 day outlook which is the 30th through the 5th also showing very chilly conditions possibly occurring the confidence is obviously lower because it's farther out so naturally it'll be in the lighter blues but um you can see also that the oranges are in the lighter oranges, so it's just overall confidence went down, but still a similar pattern. And uh, you know, it's it's at this point it's not really worth uh, even you know trying to prove it to you guys because it's basically gonna happen and everything's showing towards it now. It's more like you know what will the outcomes be and what will uh, <laughs> what what are the characteristics of this compared to previous ones. And I want to demonstrate that by showing you the low humidity levels that are possibly going to be occurring. If we could go, this could load a little bit quicker. Uh, let's go to the relative humidity. I want to show you some of this really dry air that will be occurring <laughs> across uh, the country with these uh, with these cool blasts. Let's put this out of motion. It's, it's on play, and I want to demonstrate to you that this is almost like winter-like 
air and I'll explain what I mean by that. Look at this blast of air. <clears throat> this is the one that just occurred and look at how dry that air is. That is <clears throat> that is 10 to 15% in humidity. That is very dry, very low. <clears throat> in some locations it is even lower. And <clears throat> this is obviously a little bit higher up in the atmosphere, but still uh it, that directly correlates with the um <clears throat> with the humidity on the on the on the surface it's probably not going to be dry to down to 50 percent but around 30 40 um you know 20 to 40 percent is going to be in these areas you can see very i mean look at that that's just extremely dry and if we continue uh we see a little bit of warm up but then another uh, the cool off uh, kind of stays in the seat and you could uh, if you were to overlap this with the temperature anomalies this would be also cool because you could tell that where it's going to be cool it's usually drier air and then we see again the uh we see a little bit of that warm up throughout that fourth six, and we see another cool blast of air with very low humidity. So uh, all very correlated, and all very connected, and all very unique and almost rare for this time of the year. So as we would see very humid air masses, now we're seeing very very pleasant fall like fall like weather. So beautiful weather, and go out enjoy this weekend because it's just gonna be fantastic. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Consider liking the video. Consider subscribing to this channel. I'll catch you all guys on the next episode. See ya. Bye.